Hey guys, my name is Louise and I'm the Trades Women Empowerment Coach and I empower women to empower themselves to just go out and kill it. Um, today I'm going to be talking about celebrating your wins and I'm going to tell you about my wins over the years, um, which is something that I really, really need to do um, because something that is coming up and I really need to acknowledge that I deserve to be there. So I know, like I personally have struggled with imposter syndrome and I think one of the things that have caused me to struggle with imposter syndrome is that I don't acknowledge the hard work that I have put in to get something. I'm just like, oh yeah, that was a fluke. Like I was just in the right place at the right time. Like I didn't deserve that. I was just there. Um, and that mentality has then led me to believe that, you know, when I make it to the next step, then I didn't deserve that next step either because I didn't acknowledge that I deserved the first step. Um, so I'm going to tell you about my world skills story because I am the chief judge for the national world skills competition for heavy vehicle mechanics. And sometimes I really have some doubts on whether or not I deserve that position. Um, I applied for it and there was a selection process for it. So I know I was actively selected for that position, but sometimes I think like, I'm just a baby. Like what do I, what did I deserve to do this? Um, I have a team of amazing mechanics underneath me who have more than my lifetime and experience. So it's really easy for me to be like, one of them should do it. But you know what? I applied and I got it. And I did the work to fill out that application to then have the knowledge and the skills to get there. So I'm going to tell you the steps that I took to be able to become chief judge of the competition and I am going to own them. <sighs> okay, so in 2015 I was nominated to compete in, oh if you don't know what World Skills is, World Skills is a trading competition. I'm run in about 60 different categories nationally and internationally um, in anything from hair, beauty, cooking, welding, mechanical, game design, like it's just an amazing thing. Pretty much anything you can do a TAFE course in, um, they have a competition for. So I was nominated to compete. So, yeah, so first I had to get nominated to compete. So acknowledge that, like for me, I need to acknowledge and I am acknowledging that someone had to go out of their way to nominate me to compete in the competition. Um, yeah, without that nomination, without someone seeing me and being like, I think she could do it, um, and nominating me for that, I never would have got that opportunity. So I have put in the work to get in a position where I was seen to be nominated. First step. I then went and competed. Um, and I was just as like, I studied before I went. Um, so I did some extra sessions with my trainers at TAFE. Um, and then I was like, Let's see what happens. And to be honest, I went into that competition with the goal of not coming last. I was like, in my mind, I'm going to make it a win if I don't come last. Um, I ended up coming second in that competition. And I was kind of like, oh, like at the time, I was like, well, I fluked it and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I didn't fluke it. Like, I had done my Cert 3 in heavy vehicle mechanics. I had you know, worked every day, I worked Saturdays, I worked overtime, um, I did lots of jobs that were out of my comfort zone so I could learn, I would ask heaps of questions, I did my Cert 4 and Diagnostics at night, um, I studied for that competition, I went and like when I knew I put in the effort and I did the work to get that silver medal. Um, from there, first place automatically goes to nationals in that situation. Um, but because I come second, I didn't automatically go. Um, but I had people who had seen me compete who were like, yeah, we're going to try and get you in. You know, if there's an extra spot in the nationals, we'll try and get you in. And that was just from me talking to people. And I don't think like at the time then I was like, kind of like, oh, well, people are just nominating me. I didn't really deserve to go. But I don't think like, well, people don't go out of their way for other people if they don't believe in them. Like, it was a lot of work for those people to vouch for me to go to the national competition. It wasn't just like, a, oh yeah, we'll just tick a box and like, we just mention it and that's it. It's like, these people went and wrote emails, they asked questions, they, you know, kept reminding World Skills that I was there, I existed and I should go to nationals. And I put in the work to get that reputation for those people to vouch for me. 
So I did that. <laughs> I really need to tell myself this as well, guys. It's a process for me too. Um, <laughs> so I ended up getting into the national competition and I was like, hell yeah. And I put in a lot of work to train for that competition. It was a year later, so the regionals was in 2015 and I competed in 2016 in the national competition. Um, yeah, so I found out earlier that year, the competition was in October. Um, I started working a weekend job. So I was working full time, five days a week, doing a bit of overtime. I was working a Saturday job at a different place that worked on totally different equipment so I could get more experience. I was doing my auto electrical skill set um, which was a free course that was being run at the time and I did my plant mechanic skill set as well. So I was going to take two nights a week and sometimes three nights to practice a little bit extra with my auto electrical teacher. Um, I was working an extra day, I was reading, I was studying um, as well. So I did a lot of things to work towards that competition um, and then I won it. I won the National World Skills Competition and it was the best feeling ever. But I don't think I stopped and really looked at the hard work that I put in. I had people telling me that, you know, you know, you work so hard for this, it's so great to see you. And I was like, oh, well, I just did a little bit of extra study. No, Louise, you did like 10 to 15 extra study hours a week after working a 40 to 50 hour week. Oh, I wish I could go back and be like, girl, you worked for this. But now I'm going to tell myself that. I worked for that gold medal. I got it and I deserved it and I gave it my all. And I totally own that. Um, yeah, and then after that, I then applied to compete at internationals because it's not an automatic pathway into internationals. So I had to apply. Um, and all the hard work that I put in is what I put on my application. Um, and then I... Got into competing, well I got into the skill squad which is training to compete to the international competition. I competed at the global skills challenge um, which then I was selected officially to be a skillaroo so to compete in the international competition. Um, the competition was into, the global skills challenge was in 2017 earlier on in the year and the international competition was in 2017 in October so later on in the year. Um, and I did the work for that. I was training Instead of doing nights at TAFE, because I was working a bit further away from TAFE, I was doing a full day every fortnight. Um, and then I was doing a lot of kind of study and extra little bits and pieces um, to really get myself up and running for that. I did some, I did a few weeks full time um, training. Yeah. And I did, I did a lot of things for that international competition. I put a lot of pressure on myself because I felt like I wasn't doing enough. Um, and then when I got to the international competition, it was so overwhelming. It was absolutely crazy. There was just so many people and so much pressure. And it wasn't like the main language of the competition was English, but a lot of the people around me were speaking broken English and all that kind of stuff. So then there was all that extra pressure as well. And then these people were like the top mechanics of their country and then coming together. Like it was just like, it was amazing. It was just so overwhelming as well. But anyway... I ended up coming fourth in that competition. In 2017, I was the fourth best mechanic in the world. I tied with the French guy, um, and he is the main person from the competition who still speaks to me. Um, and then there was a guy from Morocco who was doing his rotation with me, and he's someone that I still speak to as well. And I think, like, even after that, I went on holidays for ages, Oh, about two and a half months I travelled internationally. And I I don't think, like, even in that moment, I didn't really go back and look at all the hard work that I got to get that medal. Um, yeah. But I did work really hard for that. So in, um, in internationals, you can get... So you get first, second, third, so gold, silver, bronze, and then you get medallion of excellences excellence if you get like above a certain point range so I ended up getting a medallion of excellence I traveled and then the next year so in 2018 I was chief judge for a regional competition that was held out in industry it's held over two days um and that was a lot of work 
like putting it together, communicating with people, especially at the beginning when I was like, when they were asking me questions, I was like, like why, like you just want my opinion? And then in the end, it turned out that I was chief judge and kind of the main coordinator and I had a world skills lady working with me to kind of get everything together. So it was a lot. Um, and I did that. I got that together. It was damn amazing. I had my first pregnant female judge. Um, yeah, she was female. Yeah, she was pregnant. She identifies as female. Um, and she was pregnant at the time, so that was pretty amazing. Um, so it was me and her and then a few other guys that were an amazing team to work with. Um, and then so that was later on in 2018. But before that, I had been a judge at the national competition that was in Sydney. So I was the first female judge at a national level for the heavy vehicle competition. And that was super overwhelming. I really, like, I just had so many self-doubts at that time. It was before I started taking medication um, for my mental health. And it was a lot. It was a lot. So I did that 2018 judge for nationals, um, chief judge for regional competition, industry held. And then in 2019, I went to Russia as a volunteer um, for the international competition held over there. Um, and I went as a just an operational volunteer um, and I requested to be in the heavy vehicle section. So I rocked up, they remembered me and it was awesome. And I was actually a lot more involved than I thought I would be. I was really assisting the competition manager so the guy who oversees the whole competition manager the whole competition um and then they have a, a chief judge deputy chief judge and then like competition organizer all that kind of stuff and i was really working with that top guy and it was amazing i learned so 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 much like i was really just like at that point when i was in russia i knew i was chief judge for the nationals um so i was really trying to absorb as much as i can as I could because having competed in the international competition, I knew the regional competition, the national competition wasn't quite aligned to the international. So I had felt like if the national competition was different, then I would have been better prepared for the international competition. Um, so I wanted to make that change for the people coming up after me. Um, so then from there, I, you know, I was at the international competition. I come back home, I did some changes. Like, because I was chief judge and then I had, like, my team under me and we had meetings and we are doing things. And now the national competition, hopefully with COVID, like, hopefully it stays off, is supposed to be in Perth in, at the end of August this year. So less than two months away. Um, and sometimes I doubt that I deserve that position. But you know what? I do deserve that position. Over the last six years, world skills has been like a total passion and obsession of mine. And I have worked damn hard for those medals. Damn hard. And then I got those positions. And, you know, heaps of people applied for those positions. Anyway, they could have given them to anyone. Um, and I got, I got the position. And I worked hard for that. And I really feel like I should acknowledge that more. It feels really good after telling you guys about that situation and like all the things that I've achieved along the way. It makes me feel so much more confident about going into the national competition as the chief judge. I have had nothing but respect from my team of my deputy chief judge and my judges underneath me. We're, we're all different ages. Um, I think about half of us, well, I'm Australian born, but like a lot of them aren't Australian born. I've got um, another woman um, in there as well. And I just love my team. They make me feel so good. I do have one guy who's like working offside um, with the competition who questions me a bit. And that's really where that feels that self-doubt. But I know that I deserve that position and I am the right person for the job. All right, guys. So like I said at the beginning, I am a tradeswoman empowerment coach. If you feel like you need to be empowered to then own it and empower yourself to keep going forward, please contact me. I would love to talk to you. And I'm also running a masterclass called Presenting Tradies to help you with your presentation skills, to share your story, to make other people not feel alone. If you're feeling alone, share your story. Other people will probably be in the same position as you. So go out there, keep on smashing it. I'd love to hear from you. Have a good day.